It's your zoo. Welcome to the video. Today, I'm going to be playing Blazing Beaks on the PC. See how much different it is control wise from on the Switch. Now, the one thing I notice you go into the options, you have the option of either 60 frames per second or max FPS. I always choose 60 because that's what I record at. And by default, it starts with the Xbox controller, if that's what you have plugged in. But you can also use the keyboard to navigate the menus too. So when you hit enter on this screen, it just automatically assumes you want to use the keyboard to play. But you can also press K and it'll change to the gamepad instead. I'll stick with the default duck. So this is the intro screen. You save this little bird from this monster right here. It's always the same artifact. They have the speech telling you about the crow. So all artifacts that you pick up from enemies will have negative impacts on you. This one reduces your reload speed and fire rate. And you'll take them to the shop right here and trade them to the crow for positive artifacts. We have the chubby little crow right here with a crystal ball. Hand it over. And then the artifacts they give you are entirely random. So every time you take damage, you get a coin. That's going to be helpful. Because this is where you would buy new weapons, but this is the tutorial shop, so that they're not here. The coupon, 30% discount for weapons. So starting off, most of the weapons are under 10 coins, so I guess that's not necessarily helpful until you get later in the game. But because it's a roguelike game, you have a chance of dying at any time, so it could be more useful to use it now than assume that you'll make it to a later point in the game. Yeah, the penguin just chilling here. Got an ice cube right here with an AC on it. You assume the AC would be on the penguin? Or is this thing supposed to be radiating cold, even though it's melting? And this is the shop's a safe room. I assume that's why you got all these critters out here, because they know that they can't touch you. I'll say, massive improvement so far from playing on the Switch to here. It's a lot easier to move around. I rolled right into that one like a dummy. Still no spatial awareness for me, though. But that's something I can't really fix. Maybe practice. You know, practice makes perfect and all that nonsense. Phantom Leaf, Deadly Ghost will appear for each bush that you destroy. But the question is, does that apply to enemies too? Because I can go without destroying bushes, but will they? Will they count towards it? <laughs> and knowing the nature of this game, I'm going to say probably. Ah, I like that. You destroy a bush, a deadly phantom will appear, so we're going to block your path with bushes. vial of poison. Get up there, stupid. Does not allow you to pick up any abilities. That's fine. So the ability I have right now is the feather, which is what allows me to do this little dash dodge. And I've never, I haven't found another one of those until I encountered the boss. Alright, so you get away with just destroying two of these bushes. Now where are they going to appear? That's the question. Right in front of me. Just dodge. No, I could not dodge through them. Interesting, usually your dodge allows you to get around any source of damage, but not this time. But when they say deadly, they mean deadly. And I bet they would have followed you across levels, too. Artifact Reaper unlocked. Interesting. Killed by a little spooky boy. Bad RNG, that's what we'll call that. So now that I already went through the tutorial, it just sticks you right back into a randomly generated level this time. Also, enemy effects can damage each other, which is nice. So they can blow up the little buddy right there. Oop, didn't even notice them. At least they only do one damage. You die instantly by touching an enemy. So right now there are there is no penalty for touching enemies. I'd assume most enemies? So this one I assume they mate they didn't attack which damaged me. It wasn't just touching them. 
So this one is a real gamble. I think the 1.8 refers to risk level, and I'm not sure what that does. This game seems to put a lot, a lot of importance into the negative effects of artifacts. So you see I got that artifact which said if you destroy a bush, a deadly phantom will appear for each one. And then immediately my path was blocked by bushes. So it wouldn't surprise me if enemies are drawn towards me more now that I have this artifact. Also, there's these invisible toads. So the invisible toads, you have to look out for their little footprints. So I don't see any on this level. See, these ones are the biggest risk. They basically go from doing one damage to being an insta-kill. Get my health back. I'll blow them up. They deserve it. Don't need that. Decreases fade time by half for coins and hearts. So I'm guessing what that means is coins and hearts will stay on the screen for a period of time, and so now they'll only stay half as long. Don't have a key, so I can't open this. Last time I opened one, it was just um, a health machine. You pay one coin for one health. It wasn't even guaranteed health. It was a chance to receive a health. Don't see any toads around here. They're invisible, so I always gotta be on the lookout, because if they run into me, I'm toast. You stay over there and get blowed up. That takes care of the majority of the enemies. Just this last one right here. Perfect. No shop. I really gotta hope for a shop on the way to the boss level. Oh, I hear a toad. There they are, slopping around. Oops. Had to be the artifact. Also, got farther on the switch, so this... Not doing a very good job of showing how much easier it is. That wasn't bad RNG, that was just bad gameplay on my part. Stay there with your bombs. Don't run away from them. It's your bed, you have to lie in it. Or your grave, in this case. I also like that the bombs don't blow up artifacts or coins or hearts. Die in the acid. Good job. These take two shots to kill. These ones... I assume the eggs do like three damage because they can kill themselves in one hit. Pretty bubblegum. 13% chance the weapon will jam. So that basically means 100% chance. Didn't even make it to the shop last time, did I? Deadly ghost. I'm just getting all the like the really the worst effects this time. All the other times I've played it's been pretty moderate. Where are you, stupid toad? This time I'm getting all the insta-kill effects. Oh good. They blew it up and didn't harm me. Also, enemies can see you through these, so they can shoot at you. I was choosing not to. Oh, jammed that time. And it's basically an 80% chance of jamming. Ran into the wall that time. That's my fault. This didn't run into the acid. Look really bad if I ran into the wall and the acid at the same time. So the toads, you can hear them slurping about if they're here. So besides health, points are the most important resource in this game. Because I haven't received a weapon except from buying it from the shop. In any of the times that I've played. Oh, there's a shop right there. Give her all these negative impacts. What are you buying? In this case, it's trading. Enemies who deal you damage will be kicked off. Kicked off of what? The level? 
the game. A bit more artifacts. One max HP and one HP. Sweet. So the current weapon it has a single bullet that it fires each time, does one damage, and has 0.5 second reload speed. This one, two bullets, one damage, 0.5 reload speed. This is a great gun. It's basically a Tesla cannon. Watch this. Fantastic. Get my health back. Hopefully it annihilates the enemies because you can jump from one enemy to the next. Whee! Hypno toe. Little fish. Negative one HP every time your active ability is charged, unless you have only one HP left. I'm guessing that's this. So every time this comes off a cooldown, I would lose one health. And I'd say that's not worth it. Because again, I don't think there's going to be... Nope, there's not going to be another shot before the boss. Door isn't open. There's an enemy around here somewhere. There you are. So you got to get them to stick their tongue to this thing. They'll go between shooting enemies or sticking their tongue out. Once their tongue's stuck there, you can just blast them. Make that plit face, that's when they're going to stick their tongue out. So you got to stay in front of this for a couple of seconds. Otherwise, they'll lash their tongue at you in another, any other random direction. One last time. Good enemies. All right, hand over the goods. Got money, a lot of money, a key. Ability to lay a spawner's egg. You talk about the explosive chickens? I can create my own bombs. When an enemy is killed by your shot, a bomb is thrown at you. When you purchase a weapon in the shop, that slot will be refilled. That's fancy. You have a chance to see what else is in the shop. Because these enemies have three times the health as the previous ones. Sometimes you destroy the sack, it kills them all, sometimes it doesn't. This one will explode when it runs into a path it can't go through. Ew, a heart with a mouth, that's nasty. Every time you pick up a heart, you lose three coins. What's that thing? Punish ineptitude and promote success. Something like that. Some sort of gamer speak, that's what that's for. Is it worth it? But I get a good artifact in exchange? No. That's just because I know how bad I am. I accept my limitations. Alright, got the worm in here. They shoot some weird little white goo. Which doesn't behave like acid, luckily enough. I'm trying to dodge these things, trying to dodge this acid, it'd be a huge pain. So I haven't even reached the boss of this area in the times I've played. Negative HP every time you enter a level. No thanks. Negative one and max when leaving uncollected artifacts unless it is your last. So if I get this, I have to also get this one. And these two together would be absolutely devastating, so I'm just going to pass on that. You want to explode? This wall right here. Also, I'm not sure if the demon damages themselves whenever they collide with the wall. And this one is really weird looking. But sometimes they explode on death, sometimes they don't. And some of these release, like, phantoms. Which you can't kill. And you can't disable the mechanism, so you just have to dodge them. Yeah. 
dead. Your projectile speed is reduced by 50%. Well, I don't have projectiles. So that has absolutely no negative impact on me. Come on, coward. See, sometimes they don't explode on death. Oop. That's why you absolutely want to stay out of their way. It's easy to get distracted by all the enemies like I just did. So I definitely recommend this as the best way to play the game. Runs a lot smoother than it does on the Switch. I've heard people having frame drop issues when playing it on the Switch. So this one can run at a steady 60 frames per second. And also it's a lot easier to play than on the Switch. As a mouse and keyboard, I feel it's more natural than trying to control both thumbsticks and the shoulder buttons at the same time on a Pro Controller. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.